Hi, this is Andre. We're going to continue exploring the vast labyrinth that is Infinite Reverse on the Loop A Hardware Looper. Regular Reverse takes your loop and plays the loop backwards. Infinite Reverse starts by doing that, but then when it gets to the end point of the loop, instead of repeating the loop, it keeps going further back beyond the loop point and plays back everything that it has in memory from earlier stages of the loop development. So this opens up all kinds of possibilities for very unusual and exciting ways you can interact with the loop. Part one was intended as a preliminary introduction to Infinite Reverse. This video is going to go a little deeper. We're going to explore more Lupe functions in conjunction with Infinite Reverse, and we're also going to be looking at different ways that the reversed and the dry loop can interact and cross-feed into one another. Before we start that, let me make a couple of notes. First of all, all three of the performances make reference to phasing and flamming. And in this particular case, we're not talking about phasers in the audio effect sense. We're talking about the concept of having two sounds that are essentially the same. They start off together, playing at the same time, and then they gradually drift out of sync with one another. Steve Reich is basically the king of that kind of technique. The idea is that when they drift out of sync, you start getting these new composite rhythms and sounds that exist as a result of the combination of the two signals that are no longer synchronized. I love that technique. It's one of my favorite things about the Lupe. I use it a lot, and you're going to hear in this video, there are times when I do it deliberately, and there are also times when it just kind of spontaneously happens. Also, a couple of fairly mundane technical notes. First of all, the Lupe is set up so that if you start with an empty loop, the multiply button can double as a record switch, and that happens in one or two cases here. The other thing to mention is that I have infinite reverse assigned to the record button for this video, just because the record button is easy to reach, and I wanted to make life a little easier for myself.
As you've probably started to suspect by now, I'm really into Infinite Reverse, but it's not something that I ever thought about until I was actually presented with a hardware looper that had it already there. And this is one of the really challenging and ironic aspects of looping device development. It's the chicken or the egg situation of having features available that people can use and having enough interest in those features for the manufacturer to put them in in the first place. So for instance, when I started looping, I never would have thought to ask for a replace function, much less a momentary replace function, because I had no frame of reference for it. It was only after I'd been using the EDP for a couple of years that I started exploring some of those more rarefied techniques. Now, of course, I can barely live without sus replace, but I had to actually have access to it and try it and explore it before I was able to come to that realization. Same thing with infinite reverse and unrounded multiply and all kinds of features that are available in the EDP and the Lupe and other forward-thinking loopers. So the challenge is that in order for people to be able to use features, they first have to have access to them. But manufacturers are often reluctant to put features in unless there is a tangible demand for them. So how do you get the musicians to be able to try the stuff in the first place and therefore create demand for those features in future devices? Well, you basically need to have manufacturers that are willing to put that stuff in there. People who are willing to put a lot of unconventional functionality in their devices and accept that it might take a while, a few months, maybe a few years, maybe a few decades, before a lot of the cool stuff in there becomes more widely understood and asked for. Finally, here's a note of cautious optimism. It's the end of July 2021, and it feels like we're in kind of a new golden age of hardware loopers in terms of a lot of manufacturers being willing to put strange and unusual features into their devices and put them out into the marketplace. And just in the last couple of years, I can think of at least six or seven really cool, really esoteric, really unusual looping pedals that have hit the market that have not only had a lot to offer, but have also been very successful as far as there being a real demand for it. And in fact, one of the main reasons that I started this video series in the first place was that I wanted to try and demonstrate looping concepts and functions that were not so widely available and not so commonplace. If you can't let somebody work with a function themselves, then the next best thing is to hopefully have it demonstrated. So that's been one of the main driving factors behind my doing the video. So I am really, really delighted to see all of this stuff happening with new loopers being released with really cool, really unusual feature sets. I have no objection to people who get what they need out of more basic phrase samplers and loop stations. That's totally fine. But for weirdos like myself and a lot of other people I know of, uh, we are very grateful to the manufacturers who are willing to put this stuff in there and patiently wait for us to wrap our heads around it. I know I still have a lot of head wrapping with infinite reverse to do, and I'm really looking forward to doing that. So thank you very much to Glue Glue for making the Lupe in the first place, and thank you to you for tuning in. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.